Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of kooky, crazy kids in love. The love reacting to some Fallout. We're diving back into Fallout. Yeah, so this is Fallout Season 3, Episode 15 and 16. Vault City and Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Vault City's got a nice ring to it. I'll yeah. admit. <laughs> I don't know that's a nice place to live. Probably not. I'm going to say no, it's definitely not. Everything we've seen in Fallout. But yeah, about the it, vaults. It has a nice ring. And because it's Fallout, we have a drink. He remembered. Yeah, well, I got to remember because I got to introduce it because uh, Bethany's got Bucky in her, in her lap. I do. So I, I'm not going to do this on camera, but you'll see I have my stim pack. So I'm going to shoot into my drink off camera. Give it a little stir. That helps. Stim pack spritzer. Drink with all of our Fallout reactions. Cheers. All right, I'm going to cheers. Bucky's going to let me cheers. Make him let me cheers. Cheers. You can call me Daisy. The voice. She's, she's in here. Mm -hmm. I knew a fella used to talk to his gun. She says her name is Daisy. Daisy, did you see anyone else come by here? No other humans have come within range of my senses. She hasn't seen any other people. Ask your imaginary friend if she saw a machine that looks human. I smelled a machine you that can't sounded hear it, as dude. though it moved on two feet. It passed within sensory range 94 minutes ago and passed out of range 81 minutes ago. She can hear you. Hmm. The android was here an hour and a half ago. Great. So now Tanner's got an imaginary friend. The storyteller here has Edna. Where's my sidekick? Hmm. I don't know, Ranger. You think it's wise to trust some random brain in a jar that we just met? But she's a dog brain. Dogs don't lie, right? She loves dogs. I have been informed on numerous occasions that I am a good dog. <laughs> a good, good dog. Aww. See, she's a good dog. <laughs> Aren't you, girl? Bark, bark. Oh. Wolf, wolf. If this goes sideways, I'm going to be so upset. Yeah, and just does, does not like it. says she doesn't like your new friend. Grr. We've wasted enough time. Let's go see if we're right about the android needing biomed gel for its brain. Edna says there's no one else in here. Daisy says she doesn't smell anyone either. Spread out and look for the brain goo storage room. And see if you can find some police headsets so you can hear Daisy. Gun's gotta be heavy. I would you know, think so. The chosen one had to find some biomed gel to help a friend back about 40 years ago. An artificial intelligence that was downloaded into a robo brain. It called itself Skynet, an artificial intelligence Skynet. computer that managed the Sierra Army Depot. According to itself, Skynet was conceived and developed through the use of alien technology. Crazy Terminators. Four years after the Great War, the AI became self-aware. It waited patiently for over a century before the Chosen One stumbled across it. Skynet just wished to travel and learn more about the world and only needed a body to download into. Some say it did just that and joined the Chosen One on their quest to save the wasteland. So was Skynet just another clone brain like this android we're chasing? No, I heard it used a monkey's brain I don't think anyone tried cloning a human brain until this fiasco. Wonder why? Vault City's cloning machine was intended for organ transplants and replacement limbs. And Vault City's leaders weren't exactly outside-the-box thinkers. Vault City. Now there's a place I don't know much about. I was there about 20 years ago. Their guards didn't like the looks of me and wouldn't let me pass the courtyard. If it makes you feel better, even the Chosen One wasn't welcome in Vault City. He went there because it was built on top of Vault 8. It was one of the control vaults that didn't have any Perfection. intentional flaws. Fully equipped with everything its inhabitants would need during and after the apocalypse. It opened right on schedule. A few years after the Great War, the people who emerged used their Garden of Eden creation kit to create the most advanced and prosperous city in the wasteland back then. But they weren't big on sharing. That's nice. Nope. They viewed the outside world with contempt. People from other communities were allowed to trade for access to Vault City's medical equipment, and they could even live in the city. 
If they agreed to become slaves, Vault City called their labor force oh. servants. But it was slavery all the same. Sounds like they would have loved an evil bastard like the Chosen One. The Chosen One wasn't there to sell slaves. They knew that the Vault Dweller came from Vault 13 and hoped that somewhere inside Vault 8 they could learn the location of the other vaults. When they arrived, they ran into a wall of bureaucracy just as solid as a Vault Tech sealing safe door. Sounds a lot like the Brotherhood used to treat outsiders. At least the Brotherhood didn't make people fill out paperwork for day passes <laughs> or run them through citizenship exams. Those evil bastards. The Vault City government paperwork. made the Chosen One jump through hoops to prove their worth to those pencil pushers. Even then, I bet they ended up engaging disreputable activities to gain their citizenship. They had long since done away with the Vault Tech's governing system of an all-powerful overseer. Vault City had a ruling council with the first citizen that still acted like an overseer. Forty years ago was first citizen Joanne Lynette. Her city was having troubles with radiation contamination from Gecko, a city built around a nearby damaged nuclear power plant. The Chosen One might have earned their citizenship the honest way, but Lynette might have just looked the other way after the Chosen One did her dirty work for her. Mm. So once the Chosen One gained access to Vault 8, did their fancy gadgets point the way to Vault 13? I find it hard to believe that all of them computers you find in the vaults are somehow connected. Funny thing is, Vault 8's central computer didn't actually have the location of Vault 13, but their records did point the way to... Vault 15. My great-great-great-great-great-grandparents were born there. And information about Vault 13 is strictly classified. Already been there myself, back when you was at Pigtails, little miss. Pigtails? <laughs> Do pigs chase their tails too? Aww. <sighs> I wish I could chase my tail. No, Daisy. Or dog Pigtails brain. Pigtails is what old hillbillies call having braids in your hair. <laughs> when the chosen one was finished with Vault City, they at least knew where to find Vault 15. And they picked up another new friend along the way, a saloon owner by the name of John Cassidy. Cassidy ran the Spittoon, a bar in the Vault City courtyard. It didn't take much convincing to get him to close up shop and get out of Vault City. The security force treated outsiders like inferior savages from wastes, and the only reason he stayed around was that he had a heart condition that made it too dangerous to wander the wastes alone. Hmm. With the rest of the Chosen One's entourage beside him, he felt he could handle anything in the wasteland. But there were forces secretly at work in California that had been plotting a takeover for over a hundred years. Time to it's... die. But that is a story Ooh. for another day. It's like a mutant bane. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I, I kind of want to just go to the next one and see what it what it what they, those things are. Let's do it. Okay. We'll debrief everything after. Okay. I found the brain goo depository. You're right about your android coming here for this. Cyborg juice. Biomed gel. Looks like it was spilled recently. I ain't no brain surgeon, but I know my electronics. Your android was scrounging in these too. Cyborg repair parts. Upgrades. This sort of tinkering around with cybernetics generally doesn't end well. There's already more than enough cybernetic horrors roaming the wasteland. You were saying something about a mechanical monstrosity that roamed the land back during the Enclave times. Yes, a fellow called Frank Horrigan. Back then, very few people knew that the Enclave even existed. They used their vertebrates to fly across the wasteland and drop their agents off on secret missions. And Horrigan was the most inhuman of their operatives. The Chosen One was a tribal from the north who knew less about the world than most people. They didn't know what to make of Horrigan when they saw him, a bunch of Enclave troops gunning down a helpless family. Time to die. Oh. He is big. Yeah. They were giants in metal armor. They quite likely hadn't seen anything like it before, unless you count that canyon at Klamath. Look around, see if you can find any other signs of what the android was up to. Here, I found these old pre-war police headsets. You should be able to tune into my frequency. 
Will we be able to hear your imaginary friend too? Daisy's real. You hear me, Tanner? How about your dog gun? My name is Daisy. I like it when people say my name. It makes my ears twitch. Aw, oh, Daisy. Well, about that. She is real. Everyone else on this frequency? You're fine. I, I sound. Coming in a little garbled. I hate to say this, but keep talking while you adjust your frequency. <laughs> and I'll let you know when you're coming in clear. Not a problem. I have a crazy idea. How's about you tell us a story? <laughs> I can hear the metal man clearly. Hello, my name is Daisy. What is yours? Well, howdy there, Daisy. People call me the storyteller, but my real name is... Yep. <laughs> I like that name. I go by two names as well. You can also call me Good Dog. Good Dog. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like old Edna's the jealous type. Yeah. Daisy. She doesn't like, like dogs. Yeah. Well, she doesn't want to get replaced by a dog. You've probably never heard of the Enclave, but everyone in California and out on the East Coast knows about them. The Enclave were bad people. I do not like bad people. I bite bad people with bullets. Oh! These bad people had waited silently out in the ocean since back when you were a, a regular dog. I am Aww. still a dog. I am a good, good dog. Yeah, you are. Part dog, part gun. You really are man's best friend, aren't you, girl? <laughs> well, while the Chosen One was wandering around the desert looking for the Gek, the Enclave had set in flying machines called Vertibirds to capture the Chosen One's friends and relatives. Even though the location of Vault 13 had been lost to everyone in the wasteland, the Enclave had access to pre-war records and communication systems. They tricked the people who still lived there into opening a big metal door that had been sealed shut since before the Chosen One was born. Hi. Bye. Oh my god. Why did no one bite the bad people? Uh, well, the they have means. of steel was evaluating the situation, was preparing a strategic, long form plan of action. You're coming in clear now. Sounds like Brotherhood propaganda. Delivered straight into my dog's floppy metallic ears. Hmm. I was telling Daisy about the Enclave. And how their technology was vastly superior to the Brotherhood's. I didn't see the NCR doing anything about them until after the Chosen One broke them up for you. So just how much better was their power armor than yours? The Enclave's abundant resources and access to pre-war research allowed them to pursue new engineering techniques that were unavailable to anyone else in the wasteland. And they had them flying machines. They could swoop down out of the sky, round up a bunch of townsfolk and take them away. Not a thing a sheriff or rangers or a town militia could do about mm -hmm. it. Towns like Reading. Yup. The Enclave had a plan that involved the forced evolutionary we virus. See through microscope with the FEB helmet on? was the same stuff that created the super mutants. I thought and the source of it was the same base in Mariposa that the, the Master had used decades planets. before. Yeah. After the lab. Vault Dweller blew the place up, all of the FEV was buried under tons of rock. The Enclave needed slave labor to excavate it. I grew up in Reading, little mining town just south of Modoc which means it was square in the middle of nowhere. Back in 42, some fella came to town. Could Back tell he was a tribal, even though he wore a vault tech jumpsuit. Said he was a chosen one among his people, and that he sought the holy geck. He helped out around our town. Anytime someone had dirty work and a few caps to spare. I told him about my problems, hoping the big damn hero would save the day for me like in the comic books. My dad's a miner. His name is Melchior, just like mine. He went away with some men dressed in metal clothes. I hope dad comes back soon. I miss his magic tricks. Damn. Sorry, Junior. I guess even the Chosen One couldn't rescue everyone. Oh, that Didn't Chosen try. One found my pa, all right. Mm. Found him and killed him on the spot. Oh. He came back to Reading and didn't have the nerve to look me in the eye. And tell me he knew he comes dead. Can't be the same chosen one. 
When I grew up, I followed in the Chosen One's steps. Learned where the Enclave took my paw and the other miners, and saw the Chosen One's handiwork for myself. But that's a story for another oh. day. Oh. He got to say the line. Nice. Good tease, because like, now that's the one where I'm like, let's just go on to the next one. Like, <laughs> But no, you will wait. Yeah. Um, really digging the story. Uh, loved it, the addition of Daisy. I mean, uh, just fantastic. I'm uh, also known I as Good Dog. A good Dog. Yeah. A good, good dog. Yeah. Um, maybe the inspiration for, uh, for how they portrayed Cosmo in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Oh my God. Take it back. Yeah. <laughs> I am not a bad dog. Take it back. What'd you think? I really enjoyed it. So, um, Vault City is not a great place to live. Well, it's a great place to live if you like were born there right. and, and everything, but it's not a great place to, to visit or try to live in uh, as an outsider. Which, there's a piece of me that's like, okay, but... You can't have a completely isolationist society. It's not possible because at the very least, it will eventually lead to inbreeding, which will eventually lead to terrible deformities and, and, and poor health and, and you'll eventually like die off. So does Vault City accept marriage visas? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. I can't believe that was where you were going with that. I'm like, what? My wife wants to marry into Vault City. I see how it is. No, no, I'm just saying they don't accept any outsiders. But, but you can't be completely isolationist. It's mm -hmm. not healthy. You will eventually die as a civilization if you are completely isolationist. So, it naturally begs the question. Yeah, I, I that's what I was wondering too about marriage visas <laughs> in this one. <laughs> I'm just saying, you marry in, I marry in, and then we can do what can like 90% of people do and just have affairs. <laughs> with each All right. other. We got our fallout plan now. Yeah, boom. We boom. set for life in Vault City, which has plenty of resources and everything that you could possibly yeah. need, and we'll still get to bang. That is that that is how we would play Fallout. That is uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's our that's our playthrough. Um, yeah. It's not like you know, it's not good. It's not bad. It's the bang playthrough. It's the bang. Yeah, that's what matters. That is what matters. Um, and for wrong place, wrong time. I mean, truly, Daisy stole the show on that one. Yeah. Um, I am very curious to hear about the next episode because um, we know that the one guy's always hated the chosen one. Yeah, because he killed his killed his dad. Um, but like. Mm -hmm. We just don't know why he killed his dad. That's just it. Like, Helen has been so in defense of the Chosen One. He's been so anti the Chosen One. Usually in cases of extreme points of view, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And I'm really curious as to what that might be. I mean, Helen could just be spouting propaganda for all we know. And maybe the Chosen One truly is a dick. Well, it depends on how you play. I mean, because Helen is seeing the the good playthrough um, when you're the female uh, character, and I think it was in Fallout Two, um, which I believe is the is the canon character, and then he's seeing it if you play it like as a dick in in Fallout, and um, you know that sort of uh, version. Um, right. It depends on how you play, but I think ultimately we're gonna have to have something come about in this story. Oh. So that's what I'm saying is like. You think there's gonna be like, if okay. This is like, if this is theoretically like canon, so to speak, at least for the Fallout universe as we're watching mm. it, I'm very curious to see where the Chosen One winds up. Oh, okay. So if they, like, yeah, all right. That's what you're saying. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want all of our Fallout reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Yep. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction to Fallout Season 3, Episode 15 and 16, which keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.